hello everyone. Thanks for joining my session. Um, so my name is Dan. Uh, I, I lead the Bloomberg uh, Data Science Serverless Platform. And I'm also the working group lead for KSERF. Um, and uh, I have been working with uh, K-Native compu uh, community uh, since 2019 and worked with a lot of the core developers here to build the uh, KSERF, which is uh, another open source project we are talking, talk talking about today. Um, yeah, so today uh, my topic is to uh, discuss how we built the uh, ML platform on top of Knative. And uh, um, I want to discuss uh, some of what works well in Knative and what are the features so we are also looking for uh, to push uh, Knative to the next level. Um, yeah, um, unfortunately my co-speaker cannot make today and also credits to for my kids to do all the slides animations. Um, so um, first, what is a uh, ML inference platform? Uh, ML inference platform provides a standard um, managed inference service uh, that provide helps to unify the um, model deployment across uh, um, multiple ML frameworks, and it also simplify and uh, the model serving and monitoring um, uh, at scale on production uh, cloud environment. So uh, ML inference, uh, inference service is a service that can generate predictions um, from a, a training model um, in response to uh, inference requests that can be a, a single request or a batch of requests. Um, so besides the common uh, problems like uh, infrastructure uh, challenges to deploy uh, cloud microservices, um, so we also have a, a unique uh, um, challenges for deploying ML inference, uh, inference services. So first of all, we want to um, uh, enable the auto scale um, inference workload both on CPU and GPU workload. So as you know, um, uh, the default uh, Kubernetes uh, HPA does not support uh, auto scaling based on GPU. Um, in order to support that, you need to uh, implement HPA with custom metrics. Um, on the set of uh, GPU metrics like duty cycle, um, power consumption, and uh, GPU memory, which is sometimes can be um, really hard to reason about how it makes the uh, auto scaling decisions. So we are really looking forward, uh, looking for a solution which can uh, work the auto scale work the same way both on CPU and GPU device, um, and. Uh, uh, and secondly, um, another important feature we want to do is to, um, when we're doing a model rollout, um, so we want to employ a safe model uh, uh, rollout strategy with uh, deeper validations uh, in addition to um, uh, readiness probes. Um, so this is crucial uh, for enable like a continuous deployment um, for the model updates without human in the loop. Um, and uh, um, Besides, uh, in addition to the re request response style um, service, and we are, um, there are also use cases where we want to uh, perform the inference um, um, based on some uh, uh, event source like A3 Kafka, and we also need to uh, uh, forward request to uh, uh, a number of like downstream uh, analytics components, which can which want to monitor the models to ensure that it performs the uh, reliable predictions. And uh, last but not the least, uh, we also have use case where we want to um, have an inference platform which can chain a multiple inference service together to get back a response. And, uh, uh, or it may need to uh, combine the outputs from multiple services uh, for the model ensemble use case. Um, so uh, why do we decide to build uh, uh, the inference platform on top of Knative? Right, so Knative gives us a, a very nice serverless uh, service uh, abstractions um, uh, for service networking and routing, and uh, it enables request-based uh, um, uh, driven auto scaling, um, um, both on CPU and GPU device, um, worked pretty nicely. Uh, it also supports both scale down to and from zero. Um, Knative also implements. Uh, um, immutable revision tracking, which allows for a splitting traffic among multiple revisions uh, for blue green, blue, green, and canary rollout. Um, and other nice features it provides is like you can get um, out of box uh, distributed tracing and uh, metrics for free. And, uh, um, 
and load balancing like it can uh, load balance based on like uh, uh, concurrency on each part to make smart uh, load balance decisions. So in order to uh, um, avoid reinvent wheels, all these uh, uh, already solved problems. So we decided to um, build uh, um, um, uh, the ML platform as uh, inference platform on top of Knative, so we can focus on to solve like uh, uh, our unique uh, inference uh, challenges. Um, so, um, so here is uh, how the case server was. Kfz was an open source project which was uh, funded by uh, companies like uh, uh, Google, IBM, and Bloomberg um, back in 2019 uh, under the Kubeflow uh, umbrella. Uh, it was used to be a sub project, and now uh, we grow um, uh, we grow tremendously afterwards. And now it's an independent project under the uh, governance by the AirFlow AI. Um, so Kserver in the serverless mode, it actually creates the uh, uh, Knative service. To provision um, to uh, enable the serverless functionality like auto scaling, canary route, and then eventing uh, capabilities. So, um, in, in fact, uh, Knative is actually uh, installed by default in the Qflow. Um, so, um, it actually, uh, as a result, it uh, um, it powers the tens of like a production model deployment uh, currently um, because of a huge base of a huge user base of Qflow. Um, so, um, inference service is a uh, Kubernetes customer source we created uh, under KServe, uh, which is a ML friendly uh, user interface uh, to allow people to describe uh, uh, ML uh, uh, deployments. So, um, in uh, um, a lot of time, like uh, people just need to specify the model format and uh, and the uh, model storage UI. So um, and then they can uh, deploy the inference service with a simple YAML. And under the hood, it gets uh, the inference service gets translated into a Knative service, which uh, runs the uh, outbox model server, which is uh, implemented in KServe. Um, it downloads the model uh, in a, in a container. Um, then once the model is downloaded, and then spins off the service. Uh, in response to the, the real-time inference requests. Uh, you can also choose to use build pack or KSub SDK to build your custom model server, um, which works pretty much the same, uh, same way. Um, so the KSub control plan provisions uh, uh, a few uh, core inference components like uh, a predictor, transformer, and explainer. Um, predictor runs as a Knative service. Um, which is uh, in the main container around the model server and uh, uh, sit along with the uh, queue proxy, which uh, exposes the auto scaling metrics and uh, can, uh, can choose concurrency. And we also have a model agent uh, which does uh, um, influence related features like uh, logging the request and uh, perform batching uh, and then send the request to the uh, model server. And transformer is a, uh, is a component which, um, uh, which transforms the raw input request and converts to the format uh, model server expects according to the standardized uh, inference protocol. Uh, and uh, explainer uh, sends a request to the predict uh, predictor to uh, try to make a, uh, to, out, uh, to generate the human interpretable uh, predictions, uh, explanations. Uh, so uh, let's first look at uh, the most important feature Kennedy provides, which is the request-driven auto-scaling. So the uh, the Kennedy auto-scaler executes and auto-scale um, uh, um, based on the request demand. So um, by uh, collecting the uh, concurrency and uh, request rate metrics from the queue proxy, uh, and uh, um, it it is a process both scale to and from zero. Um, so it's uh, it can be really useful when you uh, when you deploy inference service on GPU device, which can save the uh, GPU resources while the service is idle. And uh, um, and cold start uh, is still a kind of problem for the ML uh, deployments on production environments because uh, usually it needs to download the model and, it's, and which takes sometimes takes a few minutes and then like a, uh, and the part gets started like a few seconds. So um, in the case of actually uh, sets the default main replica to one. So, uh, and, uh, and you can also choose to set a, a bigger number uh, on the production environment, so uh, it can scale automatically uh, to handle the burst in the peak time. Uh, so let's take a look how uh, scale down to and from zero works. So uh, while the service is idle, um, Knative uh, controller actually uh, rewrites the uh, uh, HTTP router to the Knative uh, activator. 
uh, and uh, once you receive the um, uh, receiving uh, the request volume, and uh, auto scaler makes uh, um, based on the uh, request demand, it uh, automatically scale up the uh, uh, to the desired number of parts uh, based on the uh, auto scaling metrics. Um, and uh, Kinetic Activator uh, stores the request until the parts are ready to serve the uh, uh, live traffic. Um, so. Um, so Kinetic, on the other hand, also uh, uh, scale down to zero after the default 30 seconds. So sometimes when you do testing or benchmark testing, uh, you may want to avoid the uh, cost of a spin up or bend down this uh, part. So you can also choose to add the additional annotations to keep the part a little longer. So uh, to avoid the uh, 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 code start uh, uh, penalty cost. Um, Um, so uh, the Kennedy auto scaler uh, uh, makes the auto scaling decisions based on the uh, uh, your uh, concurrency target and the observed con uh, observed uh, concurrency metrics. So let's say if your target concurrency is one, which means like each part can only process one request at a time, and uh, uh, if you are uh, if you are getting like a five requests uh, average average uh, concurrency request in your part, then uh, auto scaler will automatically scale up to five parts to handle the uh, your current traffic. Uh, so uh, comparing to the uh, Kubernetes HPA, so um, Kinetic for uh, auto scaler supports addition in addition to the uh, CPU memory metrics. It also supports the concurrency and RPS metrics, so it can uh, auto scale based on your request load. Um, it, it also can support a, a scale down to and from zero, while the uh, Kubernetes HPI can only scale down to one. Um, uh, internal metrics uh, scraping, uh, Activator and QProxy actually push the metrics uh, to auto scaler uh, so, uh, via WebSocket. So, uh, often time, it can react faster than uh, the, uh, the Kubernetes uh, uh, auto, uh, HPI, which queries, has to query the uh, uh, metrics from uh, promises. Uh, and uh, um, um, Kinetic by default calculates the uh, uh, average concurrency in a 60 second window. Uh, it also enables a, a, a panic window, which is a six seconds, which can react uh, um, uh, faster when you are receiving burst of traffic. Um, Why the HPA used a stable uh, five minutes window. So sometimes it may not be able to handle the, uh, uh, the large burst of request. Uh, so next important feature uh, we are implementing in KServe is the, uh, uh, the model rollout. So um, um, often time, like uh, when you roll out a new model, you need to, to uh, validate the model uh, if the model is performed actually with the um, you know, accuracy and uh, before moving the traffic from the old model to the new model. Um, so we found that a Kinetic uh, Kubernetes uh, deployment is often limited by uh, its inability to stage the traffic. Um, so um, Kinetic, uh, so KSERF uh, um, um, actually implements uh, opinionated like a two-way uh, brokering and a canary route um, based on the Kinetic uh, revision uh, implementation. So every time, like when you update the service, it generates a new revision, and uh, case of actually uh, automatically tracks the last uh, known good revision by automatically tagging the uh, revisions that was rolled out 100% of traffic. Yeah, some of the uh, limitations of uh, default uh, Kubernetes rolling upgrade are uh, um, it it has very little control over the speed of the rollout, um, and. Uh, um, it's uh, enabled to uh, control traffic flow to how it flows to the new revision. Um, and uh, the readiness probe often are not suitable for uh, validating models uh, and doing like deeper and stress test. Um, and uh, uh, also it's not able to check the external metrics to verify the uh, model updates. Um, and uh, um, rolling upgrade can halt the uh, uh, rollout uh, if something goes wrong, but uh, it's not able to uh, roll back automatically. So we are rolled a new model. I uh, actually want to stage the traffic or on the, a stable version um, before um, I want the new version to be running. Um, so I, I will, I will where I, I can like verify and validate the model. So in this case, I can uh, add a, a canary traffic percent uh, field on the inference service YAML, so to zero. Um, so in that case, the traffic is uh, still, it will spin up a new, a new version, but uh, the it will not receive the live traffic. 
So here's how it uh, looks. So you initially have model uh, uh, one, and which is creates the candidate revision 001. Uh, it, you get a, a, a endpoint, which is you can uh, can process the live traffic. So now you uh, wrote your model two, which is the revision 002, um, because the, we set the canary traffic percent to zero. So uh, it doesn't actually receive the uh, live track, but on the other hand, like it generates a endpoint which was tagged with the latest. So you can use the latest uh, generate tag URL to uh, test your model. Um, so once you're happy with the models, then you, uh, you can bump the uh, canary uh, traffic uh, canary uh, traffic percent to 100. Then it will um, move the tracker from the uh, old model to the new model. Um, so uh, there, after you valid models, there could, could be still something goes wrong. So in case you want to roll back to the uh, last model, so can it, uh, so KServe actually automatically tracks the uh, previous rolled out revision in the inference service status. So it knows which uh, what was the revision uh, it, it, it needs to roll back to. Um, so a user can simply set the set back the canary traffic percent to zero. Um, so in this case, the, the model um, traffic will automatically uh, roll back to the previous uh, uh, version, which was tagged as the previous. So you can um, um, now the traffic will get uh, uh, rolled back to the uh, previous version automatically. Uh, so this is for uh, kin CRFN. So this is like a equivalent commands we need to uh, execute like uh, to similarly to this uh, process. KSO basically um, automated some of steps by automatically tagging the uh, tagging the revisions and uh, 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 and also like track the uh, track the last known stable version uh, automatically for the user. Um, but yeah, so this is equivalent commands you can uh, use to uh, uh, run the exactly same rollout workflow. Uh, so now I'm going to execute a demo uh, to automate the, all the uh, rollout steps I just showed. So I implemented with uh, using the Argo workflow to execute these steps. Um, So, uh, as, so first step is to um, create a new model um, with version 001, um, and then um, and then next uh, second step is to uh, after the uh, after the first model is re in the ready status, uh, it will uh, update the model uh, storage UIs to update to do uh, uh, and to roll the model uh, version two. So now you can see that the first model is ready, and now it's running the second step to update the model. Um, but uh, I, I, I want to stage the traffic is still on the old model, so the new model doesn't receive any live traffic. So you can see that the new model gets the 0% traffic, and the, all the live traffic is still processed by the old model. And the third step is actually uh, uh, so it's around a uh, model uh, validation job. So right now it's a simple query, just to verify the request uh, is uh, get the expected response. But you can also plug in your like own jobs to do more like advanced, like kind of uh, run a batch uh, request uh, from a, a golden data set and verify all the models produce the accurate result, or like run a, a stress testing uh, to make sure the lead latency uh, meets your requirement. Um, so yeah, so the once uh, once the uh, test job is successful, and then we bump automatically bump the uh, traffic percent, move the traffic uh, from the old model to the new model automatically. So in this way, we can like uh, uh, in the ML use case, we can like uh, uh, implement a continuous deployment workflow where like uh, without human in the loop. So every time they update the model, and then they will run the model testing, model validation job. And if it's successful, then it all automatically um, uh, roll out the new model to production. Um, yeah, so now you can see that traffic, the all 100% traffic is moved to the new model. Uh, so another another requirement from KServe is that uh, we uh, actually um, 
uh, in addition to the uh, running inference, we also need to monitor the model to make sure it produces the uh, reliable res uh, reliable uh, predictions. So this request actually requires a re event driven like a uh, uh, architecture where you uh, need to follow, uh, capture the original inference request and then forward to a set uh, a set of uh, model monitoring components uh, such as the uh, outlier concept drift uh, and adversarial like uh, detectors. So um, Knative eventing uh, provides uh, composable primitives to enable lay banding for um, for event producers and consumers, and I also use the cloud event to standardize the uh, passing the event data. It's not really. um, so, so KSERF uh, has a model agent, a uh, uh, sidecar, which like uh, uh, intercepts the request and then forwards the request uh, to the Knative broker. So uh, Knative broker um, uh, stores the uh, events in a durable array, and uh, and the uh, you can have a, a set of consumers which you can subscribe to the uh, brokers based on the filter, certain filter uh, of the events it is interested in. So. Here is a, we run a set of like a, a model monitoring components to, uh, to run the analytics case on the, uh, on the inference request and then you can also use to generate alerts if there's anything uh, outlier or like uh, all the data is drifted. You can generate alerts based on that. So uh, another requirement from case service that uh, uh, we just talked about is like uh, we want the inference graph which uh, wants to chain multiple requests, uh, multiple inference service to get back the a single response. Or sometimes we also need to uh, combine the outputs from multiple service inference services to for the model ensemble use case. Um, so Knative does provide a sequence and a parallel CRD, but it does, it's mainly uh, designed for async eventing. Um, but here we more like want a request response style. So we decide to uh, implement uh, our own like uh, inference graph CRD, uh, which uh, creates uh, uh, implements a graph orchestrator to change the request and merge response from like a multiple inference service uh, real time on the path to uh, deliver back the final response. Um, so on the inference graph, you can have uh, a different type of nodes, like uh, a single node, a single service, or like you have uh, uh, multiple services based on conditions, uh, or based on all weights, and uh, you can also like run inference services in parallel, and then merge the response at the end. And all these uh, different nodes can be chained together, so it's very flexible and. Uh, um, uh, in both, like you can compose pretty much compose any arbitrary like inference graph um, based on this design. And um, um, I'm happy to like uh, uh, discuss this like uh, with the Canadian continuity if there's something like uh, can be useful to the um, can be or a more generic design can be contributed to the Canadian upstream. Um, yeah, that's uh, all I have today. And uh, this, uh, both KServe and Canadian Canadian uh, community are, are great community. So I think if we combine two communities, it will be really uh, powerful. And then we can looking forward to collaborating more with Canadian community to um, to push the Canadian to next level. And uh, um, hopefully, we can like uh, get a lot of more exciting features there. Um, yeah, um, happy to take any questions. Anyone has questions for Dan? Okay. So uh, you talk about the autoscaler. I'm curious if you needed to customize somehow or if you're good with the defaults and if you're hitting uh, by any chance the, the panic window often. Uh, so the question is, is there any uh, case where we need to tune the panic window, right? Um, if you hit the panic window and also if you customize, if you, uh, I'm assuming you're using the concurrency settings. Yeah, the yeah. Scaler. yeah. But then I don't know because you put there the defaults, the 60 seconds and 6 seconds for the panic window. So I don't know if you are customizing that. If you are fine-tuning somehow. We are mostly using the defaults. Uh, we are more like, uh, uh, based on cases, we need to tune the uh, target concurrency or the, or the continuous concurrency fields. Um, so, um, so yeah, we, I think the default works um, OK. I think that um, we just need to tune those like, uh, concurrency fields um, based, on your, based on different applications.
call any more questions? Anyone? Okay. Uh, awesome. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.